Good morning and welcome to worship this morning on this Palm Sunday. I'm glad to welcome you to our virtual worship. We are again here with the skeleton crew. Uh, Belinda is up at the organ this morning and Tim is here as our music leader and Noel Martins is behind the camera. We are grateful and we are here to worship. I want you to be sure to invite you that as we embark on this Holy Week, that you plan to join us for worship on Thursday and Friday evenings. Those worship services will be ready to go at six o'clock in the evening on Thursday and Friday. Orders of worship will go out earlier in the week, probably on Wednesday. Um, we want to continue to be in prayer for our community and also the nation and especially those who are working in the medical field and first responders we want to pray for their safety and continued good health and also for the good health and recovery of those who have fallen ill in the time of this pandemic illness of covid 19. Um, i think those are all of the announcements that i have for you if you have not received a bulletin or an order of worship, this service will be posted on our Facebook page so that you can find the order of service and follow along with the hymns and the readings for further reflection and prayer and song later. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please pray with me. Loving God, creator of all that is and all that has been and all that is yet to be, we acknowledge your sovereignty and omnipotence and we come this morning to bow before you in reverence to offer our worship and prayer and praise and thanksgiving, knowing that you are God of all. And we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, sent to redeem and save the world. And we give thanks for your Holy Spirit that lives and moves in us and among us. Amen. Please join us as we sing together all glory, laud, and honor.
Let us pray. Loving God, we come before you in this time of worship, in this time of silence, in this time of separation. Open our ears to hear, O oh God. Open our eyes to see. And open our hearts to receive the words that you have for us today. For we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, the Christ. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes to us from the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 through 17. It is the promise of Messiah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double, for I have bent Judah low as my bow, and I have made Ephraim its arrow. I will arouse your sons, O Zion, and your sons, O Greece, and wield you like a warrior's sword. Then, the Lord will appear over them, and his arrows go forth like lightning. The Lord God will trumpet and march forth in the whirlwinds of the south. The Lord of hosts will protect them, and they shall devour and tread down the slingers. And they shall drink their blood like wine, and be full like a bowl, drenched like the corners of the altar. On that day, the Lord their God will save them, for they are the flock of his people. For like the jewels of a crown, they shall shine on his land. For what goodness and beauty are his? Grain shall make the young men flourish, and new wine, the young women. Here ends the reading from the prophet Zechariah. I invite you to join in singing the song, Psalm 118, as it has been rewritten and arranged by Michael Morgan. Let us sing praise together.
from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here we are on Palm Sunday, and I can honestly tell you that this is a Palm Sunday unlike any other Palm Sunday in my lifetime. For the first time in my life, there are no palms. For the first time in my life, we are not waving our palms madly singing our hosannas at the joyous procession through the sanctuary. For the first time in my life, most of us are home on a Sunday morning. Most of us are lamenting that we cannot be together in celebration of this amazing procession in remembrance of this triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Most of us are not here to remember together. But together, each one of us has a memory about a parade, about a procession, about streamers and palms and flags waving. When I was a young child, it was all about marching in the Memorial Day Parade. And I remember that we would gather early in the morning and decorate our bicycles in ribbons of red, white, and blue. And all of the marching bands from the nearby high schools would line up. And then there were floats and visiting dignitaries like the neighboring mayor. It was a festival, and it was a celebration. But here on this Palm Sunday, we find ourselves huddled in our homes, wondering what's going to happen next, wondering if we dodged a bullet, or if we just haven't caught it yet. 
Palm Sunday kicks off Holy Week, which always runs me through the range of emotions. I like festivals. I like celebrations. I like singing. I like dancing. I mostly enjoy watching people be happy. But then the shadow of the cross looms in the distance. We heard from the prophet Zechariah, Behold, your king is coming, humble and mounted on a donkey. This is Matthew's account. Zechariah, however, said, Rejoice greatly! Your king comes to you triumphant and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey. The festive triumphal entry into Jerusalem is triumphant and victorious. People singing and dancing and gathering along Jesus' route as he entered into Jerusalem. People who had had a personal experience, people who had listened to his teachings, people who had been healed, who had been forgiven, who had been made well, people who had been changed by merely being in the presence of this man joined in the parade. If you look back to the words of the prophet, the picture that is painted after the rejoicing and the triumphant and victorious arrival the picture gets a little bit more grim and gory. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. This is the entry of someone who is very, very powerful Someone who can defeat any enemy that he faces from sea to sea. And yet here is Jesus, quietly riding on a donkey in the midst of a festival parade. Already his eyes are turned toward Calvary and the shadow of the cross. Palm Sunday goes from crowds of excitement and festive nature and rejoicing from cheers to cheers, as it were as the crowd that rejoices turns into an eventual lynch mob. Because they don't understand the prayer that they have prayed. Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest heaven. You see, when we pray that Hosanna prayer, we are beseeching the Lord Save us now. Lord, save us, we beseech you. Hosanna, transliterated from the Hebrew into the Greek, means save us now. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Lord, save us. The 
the people identify this man as the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. And we know from church history that things did not always go well for the prophets of the Lord. And yet here is this one man, this one who has been identified as the Lord's anointed, as Messiah, sent to redeem and save the world, sent to come in triumph and victory. And yet the parade falls away and becomes a mob calling for his death? And then the challenge, save yourself. When we pray that prayer of Hosanna, Lord, save us, we also pray with it the words that Jesus taught his disciples that include, Thy will be done. You see, on that Friday evening at the end of the week, as the Sabbath was getting ready to begin, darkness engulfed the land and clouds of gloom settled in the hearts of those who believed that this had been Messiah, sent to have victory over the oppressive powers of the world. Hosanna to the son of David, Lord, save us now. Wait just a little bit longer. Look for the Lord. Because the victory that Messiah brings is a victory over sin and death, not victory over oppressive earthly powers, not victory over natural phenomena, but victory over sin and death. When we pray this Hosanna prayer, Lord, save us according to your will, is what we pray. It is what the prophets foretold. It is what the people celebrate in this parade entry into Jerusalem. And it is what we wait for in the darkness of Friday. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, in these quiet moments, we offer our very selves to you. We confess, O oh God, that we have withhold parts of ourselves, parts of our hearts, part of our gifts. We ask your grace be poured out upon us that you would forgive us for shortness of temper, for frustration and anger, for poorly chosen words, for acts of meanness that have hurt others. Change our hearts, O oh God. Send your Holy Spirit to dwell in us and guide us so that we might be beacons of your light and love for the world. And it is for your world, O oh God, that we pray. We lift our voices together with voices around the world, praying for brothers and sisters, strangers and friends, loved ones and enemies. Preserve us, O oh God. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna in the highest heaven, O oh God. We pray to you, save us now. We pray for your world, for countries in every continent, that are fighting the coronavirus, this COVID-19 that is devastating your children. We pray for nations and their leaders. We pray for citizens of your world. We pray for this country. We pray for those who run in to the danger zones, for those who are charged to hold a line, for those who minister and care for those who are wounded and fallen. Be with us all, O oh God. Grant your wisdom and healing according to your will. Send out your Holy Spirit to direct and guide our steps and the discernment of those in power and authority. Grant us grace, O oh God, to stand together, though physically apart to be the church, to be the body of Christ, practicing love and compassion and care in a world broken down and devastated. Grant us hope and healing. For we pray all of these things, O oh God, using the words that Jesus taught his disciples to use when praying. And we say with the boldness of children, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Let us sing together. is God's anointed come in victory and triumph over death. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen. Amen.